Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got a little bit of something, something we're going to talk about today. You've been hearing everybody talk about driving without no license, and they've been telling you that you're not required to have a license, and they've just been talking. They've not been proving it. Now, some people have been showing you the Title 18. I show you statute at large. Now, if you don't understand that U.S. Code, Title 18, 1, Title 4, Title 5, all of those stupid titles, those U.S. Codes are not law. They're only prima facie. They're, they're presumptive law. In other words, there's a presumption that that junk is law. If you don't know this, then when you start using U.S. Code, you subject <clears throat> yourselves to their jurisdiction because they created the code. The code is not law. If you're going by that junk, okay, if you're, if you're operating under the U.S. Code and letting them charge you with U.S. Code, that's where you're going and making your biggest mistake. Stop using the U.S. Code. I'm not saying statute at large is actual law. If you know anything about the Constitution, you would recognize when it says Congress shall make no law, that was the people saying that Congress didn't have the authority to make law. Don't believe me? Go back and read it again and read it with that understanding. The Constitution was created because the people voted on that. Go back and read the preamble. Congress didn't. There were no such thing as no stupid founding fathers. The stupid founding fathers didn't do anything. But that's okay. That's the history that they have hidden from everybody else. But it's okay. Go ahead and do your history, do your research, and find out about the town halls that they had. Where the people actually got together. Where they, the amendments, the people had to vote on that. It wasn't Congress who voted on it. The people sent their delegates back to so-called Pennsylvania with their choice. That's how this so-called government was to be regulated. It wasn't supposed to be regulated by a republic. The reason why it was called a republic is because the people chose a representative to take their wishes back to Congress. You guys have heard those phrases before. This is the will of the people. It wasn't the will of Congress. It wasn't the will of some so-called founding stupid fathers. But I can't tell this to the world because the world is not ready to hear this. They're too busy listening to the news and listening to judges and listening to lawyers tell them what the law says and what the law is instead of doing the research for themselves and then using logic. Why would the people, <laughs> after they sat up there and organized, authorized, and participated in a revolution, then allow themselves to be ruled over by a group of men taking... Oh, no, you guys, you know what's best for us. Yeah, we're too stupid. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. You go right ahead. No, we, we will do that. We will give up all of our rights all over again. Yeah, because, you know, we stupid. Okay. <sighs> all right, driver's licenses. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people out there putting out videos. I can listen to the videos, and I can tell just off of the first, what, 30 seconds? whether or not I'm going to continue to listen. Now, I will tell you, people like Rob Ryder, I'll listen to Rob. Why? Because Rob, he shows you what he's talking about. Uh, Tex Mason, you don't hear me talk too much about Tex Mason because I often don't mention Tex because I don't know if Tex is still doing videos or not, but I believe that he is still doing videos. I talk to Tex all the time, but we don't talk about his video making. We talk about law and other things. Matter of fact, I probably will give him a call either today or tomorrow. But Tex Mason, like I said before on a video last week, Tex, out of all the people that I talk to about any of this stuff, this is the man that knows what he's talking about. He does the research. Yeah, we don't agree on everything, but you want to know something? When we talk, it's a... Uh, I, I really want to record those calls. You guys really need to hear those calls because those calls are more informative than anything, any conversations I have with most people. But what I've learned to do with text these days is to listen because he works out things in his mind the same as I work out things in mine to talk about it because it allows us to process things. So I give Mr. Tex Mason his credit. 
You see, that's the thing. I'll give people their credit because, in my opinion, they deserve it. Now, let's talk about this driver's license thing so that you guys get it. What we're going to do, I, I, this is uh, this junk right here. I didn't ask for this, but I want y'all to hold on a second. Uh, D-R-I-V-E-R. Let's do driver's license, California. Let's do California. California, here I come, right back where I got it from. Okay, how to apply for a driver's license in California? What are the steps? Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, look at that. He got his on their driver's license. Anyway, California kid driver's license. Oh, that is so important. They trying to get everybody from the youngest age to the oldest age to contract. So, we're going to click on California driver's licenses. I just want the application, okay? That's, I don't care about no identification card. How to apply for the real ID. Got to do it by May 7th, okay? Got to, you need, you will need a real ID if you want to use your license or board or to board a domestic flight or to enter federal facilities. Excuse me? You mean to tell me I got a contract with y'all again? Just to be able to be who I am? Oh, no! Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want the driver's license. So it says I need to get the real ID. I don't want to get the real ID. I want the driver's license. Oh, it says license. So let's click on the real ID. Renew your license. Real ID. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Gather your documents, how to get it. Complete the application online and upload your documents. Now they have an online application. I don't want the online application. I want the physical application. So some of you are gonna end up going through this as well, okay? Some of you are gonna end up having to go through this as well. You don't wanna do this online. You want the physical application. Why? Uh, start. No, I don't want to start. I want to download. So let's go back and we'll get that. Let me put y'all on pause while I get that. And then we're going to finish the conversation. I'm going to show y'all the legitimacy of the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, I do apologize. They must have known I was coming. Because California, they only allow you to get the driver's license form in person. You cannot download it from online. Now, New York has the same phone, MV Motor Vehicle 44. Why is the DL, why, then let's do this, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, California-I-A, DL44 form, DMV. Okay, we're going to click on that, DMV. But when you go to forms, it's only online. Okay, can I print a DL44 phone? I want to print it, but you got to go to them PDF files. See, you got to go to Doc Hub. Why I got to pay for a stupid phone? It's a free phone. Can't go to the DMV. It's only online. So you got to go to the physical location and pick up a form. Or you call them and they'll mail you a form. Now, why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Well, they put you through the hassle. Pay attention. And by putting you through the hassle, pay attention, you would rather not go through the hassle and fill out the form online. Remember how they used to have it to where you couldn't do it online? You had to go in and fill it out at the location? Well, same thing. But now they don't want y'all to know what this form does. Would y'all like to know what this form does when you fill out the application? Any application? Would you like to know? All right, let's look up a word. Because I, I got to go to the DMV today anyway, so I'll go pick up a form. Um, we need Nexus. D-E-F. Defamonition. A connection or link between things, persons or events, especially that is or is part of a chain of causation. You know what causation is, don't you? Cause and effect, causation, 
Okay, you got to understand what causation is. A nexus, the core or center of a matter or a situation. So now that y'all know a nexus means that there has to be some type of connection. Without this connection, there is no justification. Okay, pay attention. I want y'all to pay attention. It's important. All right? Important. It is impossible. Impossible. No, it's impossible. It's impossible to prove jurisdiction exists. It's impossible to prove that jurisdiction exists absent a substantial nexus with the state. That nexus is the application, people. Ladies and gentlemen, the application has you attesting. It's an affidavit. You are swearing under penalty of perjury that the information in that affidavit is true and correct. And an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth in commerce. You guys have heard that before. It's a maxim. The application is the nexus not the license. The license is a secondary nexus. It's also used to rebut any presumption that you are not what you say you is. You feels me? Because I feels me because I understand what I'm talking about. You feels me? Ladies and gentlemen, some of y'all are going to understand this and some of y'all ain't. I can't help y'all that ain't. I can barely help y'all that is. Let me go ahead and propose it to you again. It is impossible to prove that jurisdiction exists. I challenge your jurisdiction. You don't need to challenge your jurisdiction. I need you to prove to me you got jurisdiction. Don't just say it. Oh, no, you ain't got that type of power to where you just say something and it, it comes to be. Oh, who made you God? When did you become God? So you can't create nothing out of nothing. So uh -uh, you ain't got no jurisdiction unless you can prove you got jurisdiction, you need to shut up. Nope, you're not controlling nothing in this room. Until you prove you have the authority, shut up. No, you can say whatever you want. You can hit whatever stupid gavel you got. But until you can prove you have jurisdiction, you need to shut up. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't talk to these idiots like I do. They won't even let me get into a single court now. Okay, sorry because they don't want me uncovering their little anuses in front of the whole public. Look, Ma, the king's got no clothes. When you realize that it's just a facade, pay attention. Such as voluntary subscription to license, subscribing, application. When you subscribe, 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 subscribe. Hit like, hit like, hit like. When you subscribe for a license, all jurisdictional facts supporting the claim to support jurisdiction exists must appear on the record of the court. They can't just say they have jurisdiction. They must prove they have jurisdiction. For without jurisdiction, according to the Supreme Court, pay attention because it's important, Rhode Island v. Massachusetts. 1824, Supreme Court says that the court, when it lacks jurisdiction, is in what's called want of jurisdiction. Wanting, they want jurisdiction, but can't get it. Where a person is not at the time a licensee, I don't have a driver's license, haven't had a driver's license since 2008, did not surrender it, but every DMV has a surrendering of the license. Okay, because that's where your privileges and immunities come from. You're not supposed to have privileges and immunities. You're supposed to have secured rights. Okay, pay attention. Gave them back their junk. Been pulled over at least eight times since 2008. Never showed anybody a license. Always handed them an ID. No problem. When the person is not at the time a licensee, neither the agency, the DMV, or any official, a judicial officer or a police officer, 
has any jurisdiction of said person to consider or make any orders. One ground of want of jurisdiction, Massachusetts versus Rhode Island, is that the accused was not a licensee and it was not claimed that he was. Let's do this. Copy, real quick. M A S S V Massachusetts versus Rhode Island. Okay. Now they want to do basketball. I don't want to do basketball. Watch this. One eight vente cuatro. This was a Supreme Court decision. Rhode Island v. Massachusetts. Sorry. Oh, it's 1841. I said 1824. I apologize. 1841. Nope. We're going to go to 1841. Okay. Y'all, the Supreme Court made this decision. This was all about jurisdiction. Don't you jurisdiction me. This is all about jurisdiction. And we're going to go control F and we're going to go control V and we're going to go, oh no, it ain't there. No, I don't want an exact match. Get out of here. Emoji. No, who came up with that stupid name? Emoji. Emo. Anyway, move to dismiss the bill on the ground that the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction. The question of jurisdiction was argued by Austin, the attorney for the, the attorney general from Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, jurisdiction was the point. Now, on the ground, the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction in the cause. The question of jurisdiction was argued by the stupid attorney. And now the court has no power or jurisdiction to disturb or interfere with the boundary lines actually existing between two states. Well-known facts define the resting and early compact and long continued acquiescence and possession upon any allegation of fraud and mistake of original transaction. Ladies and gentlemen, they said they were time barred is what they're saying. Now, Rhode Island had immediately gone before the tribunal having competent jurisdiction. Okay, this is what y'all need to know. This is what they've been talking about, the A-N-T. Oh, we don't have want? There's supposed to be want to jurisdiction in here, so I can't give that to y'all. I have the other quote from the same case, um, the exact quote. But you must understand, this case was all about jurisdiction. There was a boundary issue. Massachusetts wanted to claim some land that Rhode Island was claiming, and Rhode Island was saying, no, they can't have this land. That's our land. This land is your land. This land is our land from Rhode Island to Massachusetts. And you know what I'm saying? That's what they were doing. They were disputing over land. And the Supreme Court said it had no jurisdiction to hear the matter. It was barred from hearing the matter. Why? Because the Constitution did not give it jurisdiction. The Supreme Court only has jurisdiction over dispute between two parties. Now, because the Constitution did not give it jurisdiction over states, and it doesn't have jurisdiction over states, ladies and gentlemen, unless they're violating the Constitution. The Supreme Court highlights that they weren't violating the Constitution, so they weren't going to answer the question. And whatever that other tribunal that had jurisdiction was, that's what they were going by. So now that we got the jurisdictional nexus, ladies and gentlemen, the word nexus just means that there has to be some type of connection. Well, my birth certificate? No, they're not doing that type of connection, ladies and gentlemen. That's not the nexus. The nexus is a voluntary subscription to license. That's why we highlighted it for you. Okay, this is the laws 2021. Go to SACOM911.com forward slash PDFS. PDFs in all capital letters is PDF. And you do a search for 21 update, 2021 updated, 2021 updated, the laws that you did not know exist. Pay attention, people. When a person is not at the time of licensee, when you don't have a license, neither the agency, the DMV, or any official, police officer, judge, no matter who they are, has any jurisdiction of said person to consider or make an order. They cannot order you to do this or order you to do that. Now, you don't argue with them. This is what you sue them under. Now, what we did, pay attention, 
there was a website known as Case Text. Some of you guys know about Case Text. We went and did this in Case Text. We did it for several of these. And pay attention to make sure that this was no fluke. Such recommendations. From the first, the petitioner objected to any... Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That right there, I just need y'all to know. That right there is um my alarm. They they give me the B bud to free myself. That's my alarm. It's because I got training this morning. And so that's the alarm. Although he answered the questions put to him by the district supervisor. So he says the petitioner objected to any proceedings on the ground that there was no jurisdiction before or therefore, and he offered no evidence. He didn't have to offer evidence. It's not his job to prove the jurisdiction. Although he answered questions put to him by the district supervisor. One ground as to jurisdiction is that the petitioner was not at the time of the proceedings a licensed contractor, and it was not claimed that he was. His license had expired, and he had not asked for its renewal. That's what I did all the way back in 2008. I refused to renew my license. Told him I wasn't going to renew the license. The fact that there was no identification of the defendant as the commission merchant, dealer, or broker is not fatal to this action. The acts of the defendant, as alleged in the complaint, fall within the definition of commission merchant, dealer, or broker as contained in the act. Now, hold on. Pay attention, y'all. They're using a presumption. Now, hold on. Further objection to our jurisdiction was made by the defendant because he was not licensed under the act. Secretary found, and we so find that the act presumes that the defendant was subject to license. No, it isn't. But they're saying because he was operating in this capacity, it is presumed he was subject, subject, bound under the license. Pay attention, people. They need the license. No person other than the licensee can be guilty of violating blah, 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 blah of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Law, since the legislature apparently intended that the license and he alone, licensee and he alone, should be responsible for the conduct, blah, 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 blah. We put these cases here. These are verified cases. Casetext.com. Look at how many we gave you. Look at how many we gave you. Look at how many cases. Okay? Over 25 cases documenting the fact that you need to have a license in order for them to have the nexus. Now, there are other things of nexus, so you'll have to go and think about everything you got. Vehicle registration, nexus. That's why people stop having vehicle registrations, but they don't understand the DMV still has the true title to your vehicle, true title. Or just like there's a true bill, there's a true title. Those of you who have debts, you should be asking the whatever company you're dealing with, just, I just need a true bill or a true record of accounting. That's all. Don't, don't send me a statement. I just need a true record of accounting. Okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a good morning and I need to go. 25 minutes of explaining to you guys why you want to carry that Department of Motor Vehicles application with you and why you want to point to the point that it says on that line next to the signature that you're declaring under penalty of perjury. That's a violation of the so-called contract clause for the United States, which means no one may be compelled to contract. The government cannot compel you to contract. Plus, you don't need to contract to exercise a right, <laughs> okay? The right is unalienable. Okay, unalienable or inalienable, meaning they can't put a lien on it. So requiring you to license and then subjecting you to a penalty is placing a lien on that right. Don't do my research, do yours. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got to go. Y'all have a good day. Take care of yourselves. Arriba Dirty.